Hey everybody, it's Ned Bellavance, Ned1313 on Twitter, and welcome to the Daily Check-In. I've got a special guest for you today to talk about the best career advice they ever got. It's Bobby Allen. Bobby Allen, welcome to the show. Why don't you tell the good folks a little bit about yourself and your career trajectory? Sure. Thank you, Ned. Thanks for having me on the program, first of all. Um, second of all, I, I bring you greetings from Charlotte, aka Silicon South. <laughs> I always like to tell people that we're not country bumpkins sitting on tractors. We can innovate in the Southeast. Um, so my career has been, I've done stints at major companies like Intel and Bank of America, but I've been doing specifically cloud computing startups since 2012. So I've been in that world of kind of innovative companies that are doing new things, bringing new solutions to bear. That's what I love doing. I love talking to customers, getting in there and mixing it up and helping them separate fact from fiction. Fact from fiction. And there is a lot of, um, maybe not fiction, but stretched truths when it comes yeah. to the cloud. I'm sure you've encountered that. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I'm, I'm curious, you ended up doing cloud computing in 2012, which is really early to start out on cloud computing. How did you jump into the industry so early on in that process? So actually there was a buddy of mine who got me into the, into the industry. So outside of being a technologist, I'm a pastor. And this cloud architect came to our church and he says, wait, did I hear that one of the pastors built the website and the mobile apps? And, and I said, yeah, that's me. I did that. And so he's like, I want to talk to you some more. So we developed a friendship and a relationship. And so that guy pulled me into the world of cloud computing at, at a, a startup that subsequently got acquired by CSC. So that was pretty cool. But in, but in 2012, Ned, what, what was really cool was um, that company was the first kind of commercial management platform. So we were doing multi-cloud stuff in 2012. So some of the biggest <laughs> clients in the world, we were hooking up VMware, Amazon Azure, OpenStack, Terramark from one single pane of glass at that time. And, and I was working a lot with this, this guy who put me into that. His name is Paul Curtis. Uh, I think he's Cloud Sophic on Twitter. Really cool guy. Phenomenal. He's a, he's a CISO now, actually, in addition to being a cloud architect as well and just an all around just kind of, you know, uh, pretty bad dude in terms of knowing how to get it get stuff done in cloud. So, but so I blame him. So he's a friend of mine. Um, our wives hang out, but uh, he it's his fault that I got into this cloud thing eight years ago. Gotcha. You know, it really it's it's all about the network of people. You know, I don't know about like your experience, and, and we're going to dive into that in a second. But I know personally for me, most of the jobs I've ever gotten were through someone I knew or someone who heard about me through somebody else. And it, it's, it hasn't been filling out an application or searching on LinkedIn for job listings. I, I agree 100% that. I mean, that, that networking connection, those relationships are so key. And that's actually some of what I hope to share a little bit about some simple advice for, you, for your audience that I've thought about in terms of different career things. So uh, love, yeah. that, love that topic. Let's let's dive into that. So I know in, in my life, there have been a few key, like either watershed moments or somebody said something to me or gave me some advice that really moved the ball forward when it came to my career. And I think yeah. you've had a couple of those instances as well. So why don't yeah. you share a few of those with the audience? So the I want to share about three things, Ned, briefly. I want to talk about change. I want to talk about relationships and I want to talk about rest. Okay. And so the first one, um, how much change can you handle is kind of the tag that I'll put around this amount of advice. And this came from conversation that I had with the mentor of mine in Bank of America when I was asking him whether it was time for me to leave. So he was also some of the push that I needed to get out of corporate America and do the startup thing. And so I was frustrated because I wasn't getting promoted. I felt like the opportunities weren't materializing that were promised. And so he challenged me on, on a couple of things. And I've kind of remixed this a little bit. And this is what I want, this is what I want to share. There are typically three things about our career that we can change. We can look at what we do, we can look at where we do it, and we can look at who we do it with. Let's call that our role, our residence, and our relationships. Hmm. And so the reality is changing one of those things is doable. Changing two is difficult, but changing three is dangerous. And so when we look <laughs> at how much we can handle change in our relationship and our careers, it might look something like this. So you're at a certain company now, you're in, let's say, a QA role or a business analyst role. Can you move into something like a project management or architecture role? Likely because your home base, your residence, your family is in the same place, right? You're doing something different. So that's a level of change, but you're doing it with some people that you know. So you're changing one aspect of that. And so ultimately where a lot of people want to go, Ned, is they may be two moves away if we think about this almost like chess. If you want to be a cloud architect at AWS, you might go from being a business analyst to a cloud architect as your current company. 
And then you jump to being a cloud architect at the next company because you're changing one thing at a time. I call this kind of career change management in terms mm. of how much can you handle without hurting yourself and feeling like your family is sacrificing but not suffering. Hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, no, that makes absolute sense. I know when I've made changes in in my life, it's been deliberate. And like you said, like one thing that you're shifting at time and when I've tried to do more than that, uh, everything has kind of suffered and I, I don't want that to happen. So I love that advice. So that's change. I, I really like that. Uh, you mentioned uh, something after change. So let's let's move into that. Yeah. So so after change, I'm going to go a little bit different route in terms of relationships. I don't want to be controversial, but so, so every every week on uh, social media, I post three things. I do a marriage Monday, I do a Wednesday wisdom, and I do a Thursday thought. And my marriage Monday today was this, because I want to challenge your audience for those that are married, listen to your spouse, because your spouse is more aligned to your interest than anybody else in the entire world. One of the biggest mistakes that we make, Ned, I believe, is we consider friends enemies and enemies friends. And some of us are treating our spouses like enemies and treating people that really are enemies like friends. And so here's what I said this morning on uh, Marriage Monday. You are not less of a man if you listen to your wife, but you may be a less successful man if you don't listen to your wife. <laughs> Think about how many successful men have said things like, I wish I would have listened to her more. Mm -hmm. And the reality is many of us, Ned, I believe is pride that's keeping a lot of us from listening to a person who really has our best interests at heart. So when we think about career change management, when we think about different roles, sometimes our spouse is frustrated in that because they see us maybe toiling away at something that is not the right opportunity. And we've got to think about, are we giving them space, Ned, to give their opinion, to give their advice, or are we so defensive that they really can't say anything without causing an argument? Right, right. Yeah, I think that that really resonates with me because when you're focused on something, it's hard for you to see the bigger picture. And in theory, no one should know you better than your significant other, your partner. Absolutely. And they have that outside perspective they're able to bring in as long as you're receptive to hear what they have to say. So yes. listening to them, it just it kind of makes sense. It's the same reason you get a mentor at work, because they're able to evaluate where you are and where you want to be from outside of your narrow perspective. Absolutely. I mean, it's, you know, our, our, our partners should be a source of advice that we don't have to question the motive. If we can't trust anybody else, we should be able to trust them. <laughs> so the analogy I often use is having a partner and not listening to them is like having a car parked in the driveway and then being mad because you're walking everywhere. Like, what's the <laughs> point of that? Why, why are you doing that? You're going to be frustrated. They're going to be frustrated. Everybody's mad. And the reality is you're right in that they do give us a great perspective that we that we often miss. Um, our, our partners are a gift to us and we should, we should treat them well. Here, here's something else. I was talking to my wife about this this morning. So a lot of times people comment on my quotes and they like things that I say. I believe this. This is a personal thing. Let's call this a Bobbyism. Before many men say something deep, they did something dumb. <laughs> and so if you like a lot of the stuff that I've said is because I had a wife that was gracious working with me through a lot of that stuff. And so the person Ned, who we want to get advice from is the one who knows the deep stuff and the dumb stuff, because they know some of those prior mistakes and they're going to probably give you some advice so you don't go down that path again. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you, Bobby, when I decided to go out on my own and start my own company, of course, I ran that past my wife before I, I did that. You know, obviously I would. It's a financial decision and it's a personal decision. Mm -hmm. And when I suggested the idea, I thought I might encounter some pushback, but she was like, why haven't you done this sooner? And I was like, wow. oh. Okay, wow. so uh, I that's not only the blessing, but she had the outside perspective to know this is something I wanted to do, and she had confidence that I was capable to go do it, and wow. that gave me that push that I needed. So that was, yeah, that definitely it's, resonates with me. Now, it's so cool when you have that alignment and you're you know on the same page. You just, it just gives you that much more confidence that like my partner, my number one cheerleader, the person that knows. You know, I think Chris Rock talked about this back in the day with dating. A lot of times when you go on a date, it's your ambassador, it's your best self, but your partner knows all of it. And if they know mm -hmm. all of it, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the unmentionable, and they say, I believe in you, it gives you a boost unlike anybody else believing in you. Absolutely. All right. So I know you had one last one, and I think you said it was rest. Yes, it's about rest. And I borrowed this from a famous pastor and author, Rick Warren, because in technology, Ned, 
we have a tendency to drive so hard that we often burn ourselves out. Oh, and yeah. what we have to adopt are healthy rhythms to make sure that we're recovering. So I'm going to share this that Rick Warren says. He says we need to distract daily. We need to withdraw weekly and we need to abandon annually. So we need to think about those things so that there might be exercise. That could be a program that you watch. It could be a book that you read. There's got to be some way, especially in tech, that we disconnect from the stuff, disconnect from the social media, disconnect from the blogs, disconnect from the screens. I'll give you one that I do. One of my daily distractions, Ned, is I watch a program. My, my 14-year-old daughter and I have a date every night where we watch something together after dinner. And we often watch sci-fi stuff. We did Marvel movies. We did The Mandalorian. Um, we did Stargate Universe. We did uh, Eureka. We like a lot of sci-fi shows. Now we're working through Warehouse 13 and Young Justice. And I look forward to that every day. I'm not thinking about work. I'm not checking my phone. She looks forward to it. I look forward to it. It's a way that we get the bond. And, and I think what has to happen is when we think about the people, because really the people, Ned, are what matters the most in our lives, right? Because I always tell people time is a non-renewable resource. We can make more money. We can't make more time. And when we think about those of us that, are, that have families, my wife has one husband, my kids have one father. There are other people that can do what I do at work. No one can do what I do at home. So I've got to prioritize making sure, Ned, and here's the key. I want to make sure that my family gets the best version of Bobby, not the leftover Bobby, because work <laughs> got the best stuff. And so distract daily, withdraw weekly, abandon annually, make sure that you're resting well, not just running hard so that you last well and give your family your best. That is, oh, yeah, that resonates with me too. And you and I have a lot to talk about when it comes to sci-fi because uh, I've seen most of those shows. I think oh, this could go on for a really long time. Yeah, there, are some, there are some unsung <laughs> shows. I, I'll tell you this, Ned, and I don't know if, if your audience, especially those who might have daughters, part of why I like science fiction, number one, my wife and I are both engineers by trade. And so we like planting those little seeds with our kids. Mm -hmm. But I like sci-fi also because I've noticed that a lot of the female characters are often in positions of leadership. And I love that. I love for my daughter to see, you know, that there are women that are in charge, that are running things, that are directors, that are leaders. It plants seeds in her because she can see herself in some of those women who are running the show, doing a great job. And, and she can see men that are aligning to their leadership. So that's kind of a subtle sidebar as a parent for why I like some of those shows too. Absolutely. And uh, you mentioned Warehouse 13, which is a favorite of mine. I really yeah. enjoyed that while it was on. Some, some great, great shows. Awesome. So off the beaten path a little bit, but but that's 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 what I would share with your audience, Ned. You know, nothing super deep, just practical things that have helped me along the way. You know, I think we we definitely also have to embrace having mentors. And uh, some mentors are going to be people that we might regularly talk to. Some people you're going to get mentored for uh, by from a distance. You're mm -hmm. reading their blogs. You're looking at their tweets. You're looking at the quotes that they post. And that's why a lot, I do a lot of the things that I do on social media. I don't even call them advice. I call them observations so people can learn from my mistakes. If you can <laughs> find people like that. And maybe this is maybe this is where I'll wrap up, Ned. When it comes to wisdom, someone said a long time ago, this is not mine. Someone said anonymously. A foolish person doesn't learn from their mistakes. A smart person does learn from their mistakes, but a wise person learns from someone else's mistakes. So I want your audience to be wise, learn from my mistakes, do it better than me, and uh, we'll see what happens. Awesome. Well, that is fantastic advice. Bobby, if people want to find you on Twitter and gain these nuggets of wisdom and observation, uh, where can they follow you? So my Twitter handle is Allen underscore CLT. Think kind of balling in Charlotte, representing the Southeast. Um, <laughs> that's, that's where I am on Twitter and on Instagram. Um, you know, I don't have a ton of followers. My thing is I want to be positive. I want to contribute back to things that are helpful to people. That's really my mission on social mm -hmm. media. And that is to give people something that they can uh, marinate on, make them think a little bit, keep striving for, for what's next in their life. Awesome. Well, Bobby, thank you so much for appearing, appearing on the Daily Check-In today. Thank you, Ned. Thank you for having me.